Nothing is more exciting than an emerging talent with high potential in AFL football. Quite commonly, the particular player gets compared to significant AFL icons and plenty of hype is built around the individual. Whether it be a brilliant start to their career, promising signs in junior football, or freakish athletic attributes, not all talents hit their projection on the player they could have been. With some having brushes with the law, some lacking a mental drive for the game, or others just disappearing into the void of forgotten, in this video today, in no particular order, we go over 8 AFL players with exceptional potential but wasted their talent. Whenever we think of the Ablett name in AFL, instantly what comes to mind is of course Gary Ablett Jr. and Senior, some of the best to ever play the game. But a handful might forget the name of Nathan Ablett, the younger son and brother of Gary Ablett Senior and Junior. Coming out of junior footy, many people stated that he was far more naturally gifted and talented than his brother, with players and pundits at the time like Cam Mooney in awe of how amazing Nathan was and he couldn't believe what he could do. His coach at the time, Mark Thompson, was also in the same boat. He described Nathan as an absolute freak that was extremely coachable, had great hands, was brilliant on the ground and could kick beautifully on either foot. He also compared his style of play to the great Wayne Carey and on top stated he could have been every bit as good or better than Gary Jr. So what was the problem that caused his downfall? He had the physical skill set for the game but not the mental. His lack of drive, passion and persistence for the game is what caused his career to fall short. Often known as a shy character, he rarely participated in media opportunities and interviews and chose not to play in the TAC Cup, now known as the NAB League. Even after kicking three goals in their drought-breaking premiership win in 2007, it didn't remove his apathy for the game, as he decided to retire from AFL football at the age of 21. If he had the drive, just imagine how the AFL would be shaped in the 2010s with a Gary Ablett clone. Known as one of the biggest draft busts of all time, Harley Bennell at the time had all the tools to become an elite smooth-moving midfielder forward. Being judged the best player at the 2010 Under-18 National Championships, he was taken second overall by the Gold Coast Suns in 2010. Even though he got dropped for discipline issues early in his rookie year, he still showed promising signs in 2011, kicking 14 goals in 14 games. The qualities of the top 5 pick came to fruition the next year, averaging over 23 touches and a goal a game. He played every single game in 2012, booting home 25 goals and finishing second in the club's best and fairest behind Gary Ablett. His projections of an elite AFL talent still continued the following seasons, even being rewarded a spot in the 22 under 22 team in 2014, being widely regarded as one of the best young players in the AFL. With a mixture of injuries and off the field issues, things however started to turn south in 2015. In May, he was dropped from the side after consuming alcohol during a strict no alcohol team policy and in July, newspapers leaked images from 2013 of Bennell taking cocaine in a Tasmanian hotel. With more fallouts with teammates and a drunken altercation at the end of the home away season, Bennell's services for the Suns would be ceased at the end of 2015 and he would be traded to Fremantle. Unfortunately, Bennell couldn't get his career best form going again back in his home state for the Dockers being hampered by injury and only managing just two senior games in four years. Followed by a short stint with the Demons in 2020 and breaching COVID protocols in the process, he would retire at the end of 2020. The luckless aspect of injuries might have been an unfair predominant reason on why he was a wasted talent, but because of his off-the-field dramas and poor decision-making, he deserves a spot on today's video. Possibly one of the more known wasted talents would have to be Liam Jarrah. Playing for the Demons during their cellar dweller years didn't stop Jarrah from becoming one of the most exciting footy players to watch at the time as he sparked a shining light for all Melbourne supporters. Hailing from Uendamu, a small town around 300 kilometres northwest of Alice Springs, his backstory to the AFL was a very unique one. Playing footy from a very young age in Outback Australia, he followed his father's footsteps and played in Alice Springs during his teens. AFL scouts would start to notice him in 2008 as he started to kick goals for fun in the Central Football League in Northern Territory, also being best on ground in his grand final. Jared trained with a few clubs prior to the 2009 season and was eventually picked up by the Demons in the preseason draft. Jared would burst onto the scene right from his debut against the Dons in round 12 of 2009, snagging home his first in exciting style. Every game he played in his debut year, he'd kick a goal, 
scoring 20 from 9 games, including a Rising Star nomination for his 4 goal performance against Port Adelaide. A dislocated shoulder would see Jaro miss the first half of the 2010 season, but it didn't stop his form when coming back into the side, kicking 21 goals from 9 games as he earned the nickname of the Well Perry Wizard for his thrilling style of play. Oh, and let's not forget that mark of the year. He thumps it long. Jaro! Yeah, not bad. The kid could play. The next year, he'd finally get the chance to play a full season and slotted home 40 goals in 2011, leading Melbourne's goal-kicking tally. Things, however, would take a turn for the worst in 2012. Jarrah would unfortunately go on a crime spree over the next two years, from macheting a guy, to drink driving and having his license banned for two years, to aggravated assault which landed him six months in jail, to more driving offences and aggravated assaults. This would obviously see him delisted from Melbourne in 2012, which would cut short an exciting footballer's career that could have been something extraordinary. Chris Yaron would widely be regarded as one of the most talented players in the 2008 AFL draft. Kicking 39 goals in 13 games for Swan Districts and the Waffle Colts, he had potential to be the first overall pick, but slid to the Blues at pick six. Predominantly playing for the reserves in his debut year with a few glimpses in the senior side, Yaron kicked off his 2010 season with a bang, kicking three in the demolition win against Richmond in round one, earning himself a Rising Star nomination. Himself and the Carlton side started to string together wins. On top of that, Yaron was building confidence game by game in 2010, and so was the chemistry with exciting small forwards Eddie Betts and Jeffrey Garlett, as they were adopted the nickname of the Three Amigos. 2011 would see him continue his steady progression and produce his breakout season as he would move to halfback and be utilised in the position to display his dashing pace, taking on the game and pinpoint ball skills. The following year, he would snag home the goal of the year in round one, as Carlton would start like a house on fire. Suddenly, Yaron would suffer a foot injury and would be out for half the year, which led to Carlton derailing their season in 2012. With an inconsistent 2013 season, Yaron would find his form again in 2014, only missing out on just one game and developing into a very good link-up wingman. Alongside his use of meth, problems for Carlton meant problems for Yaron. With the Blues finishing last in 2015, Yaron wanted out, so he requested a trade to Richmond. But he couldn't get things clicking at the Tigers. With a mixture of mental health issues, use of methamphetamine, and turning up to pre-season in poor shape, Yaron and the Tigers parted ways in 2016. It would unfortunately turn into a downward spiral for Yaron, because of mental health issues and the death of his cousin and former Dockers player, Shane Yaron, he was sent to prison for five years for stealing cars and attacking police and members of the public under the influence of meth. Earlier last year, he was released on parole. Moving back around 20 years now, and a more unknown talent by the name of Adrian McAdam was recruited to North Melbourne with pick 98 in the 1992 AFL Draft. Having played in the Northern Territory Football League and captaining the NT side in the national championships prior to being picked up, he would burst onto the scene and enjoy a terrific start to his career, like no other, quite literally. He booted home seven goals in his debut game against Richmond, followed with 10 against Sydney, and six in round three against Footscray. This would give him a total of 23 goals in his first three AFL games, which still holds today the record for the most goals in a player's first three matches. He would end the 1993 season strong with 68 goals in 17 games next to his name. His electrifying pace and agility, as well as his evasion and a deadly kick for goal, was key on why he managed such an exceptional season. However, he was unable to replicate such a performance, and after a mediocre 1994 season, followed by one game in 1995 and a second chance squandered with Collingwood in 1996, he was out of the league. Had he been capable of exhibiting these skills at the highest level for longer than a solitary season, he might well have verged on genuine greatness. We'll move back to the 2010s now, and one that Hawks fans might be familiar with is Dale Garlett. Garlett was a potential top 10 pick in 2013, but because of his troubles off the field with his late nights, alcohol issues, and missed appointments with recruiters, he slid out of the top 30 and was taken by the reigning premiers at the time of the Hawks at pick 38. It seemed like he was in the perfect situation to fix his party lifestyle and become a superstar player, joining a successful team and having fellow Aboriginal teammates like Sil Rioli and Sean Burgoyne as his mentors. 
even Luke Hodge stated at a footy function later on that he was the most naturally talented footballer he had ever seen, even ahead of Cyril Rioli. Prior to getting picked up by the Hawks, he'd enjoy a terrific spell for the Swan Districts in the Waffle, averaging over 20 touches a game and kicking 45 goals as a small forward. Even Alistair Clarkson was keen on the player and he would message him each week to see how he was going. Alongside that, he'd improve his lifestyle, ditching his old mates and focusing solely on his footy. So with a lot of positive aids guiding his pathway to a potential elite career, it just seemed however that Dale wasn't cut out to make it to the big time. He struggled mentally and physically to meet the high demands of AFL football and decided to return to Perth to play for the Swan Districts. In late 2014, Garlett would be arrested for possession of a stolen car and possession of speed. It would unfortunately start a crime spree, and in 2015, he would be put behind bars for almost five years for 14 charges, including burglary, stealing, and receiving stolen property under the influence of ice. A sad way to see a talented athlete's career burn out, as if he could have met the pressures of AFL football, we might have witnessed a superstar. With pick six of the 1999 AFL draft, a then struggling Brisbane Lions side decided to take South African born young gun Damien Cupido. A player who had significant ability and an eye for goal, but his AFL career was short lived. With a mixture of promising glimpses, injuries, and inconsistencies, Cupido was traded to Essendon in 2003, with Blake Carousella going the other way. His first season for the Dons would be his breakout, as he booted home 39 goals as a small forward, becoming a star for the Bombers. Two luckless knee injuries would derail his footy back-to-back -back seasons in 2004 and 5, but because of his weight gain, laziness and poor application and rehab, it would seem be delisted by the Bombers at the end of the 2005 season. He had an attempt to try to get back to the top flight of footy through the Sandful in 2009, but struggled. A gambling addiction alongside weight gain would seem step down from the competition as he moved on to country football, still playing to this day and booting home goals for fun. A player that could have turned into one of the competition's best small forwards of the 2000s, but perhaps everything came too easy to him, hence why his laziness and lack of proper drive makes him a wasted talent on today's video. The last player we'll go over is perhaps the biggest waste of talent out of anyone in the video. He goes by the name of Alan Jakovic, the older brother and West Coast champion of Glenn. Why you ask? Because of him averaging a staggering 3.9 goals a game and booting 208 goals in 54 games, Jakovic could have had the potential to become one of the best key forwards of the 1990s and maybe even a Hall of Fame selection. After kicking over 100 goals in the sandfall, he was taken 6th overall by the Demons in the 1990 AFL Draft. Followed by a stagnant first half of his rookie year, Allen would run a riot from round 14 onwards, kicking 51 goals in just 7 games, with an addition of slotting 8 in the elimination final and a further 6 in a losing semi-final to cap off a brilliant debut season. From there, he was unfortunately a regular injury victim. Though he kicked 40 goals from 11 games in 1992, 39 from 9 in 1993 and 51 from 13 in 1994, he never played a full season again. Despite his slow start in 1994, Jakovic was the fastest player ever to reach 50 goals in league history in just 9 games, and he also equaled John Coleman's 21 games to 100 goals. Alongside the reoccurring injuries, he lost his passion for the game and became lazy. After turning up to a Demons preseason camp in 1995, overweight and missing many rehab sessions, he was then delisted by the club. Footscray decided to take a punt on him early in the 1995 draft, but he could only manage 7 games and was out of the league at the end of the year. So had he been capable on showing more discipline towards his career and more effort into his rehab, we potentially could have witnessed another Hall of Fame player. So everyone, there were 8 of the biggest AFL wasted talents. Thank you very much for tuning into today's video. It was a fun video to do. Of course, there are plenty more wasted talent, so feel free to comment yours below too. The video will probably go uh, just for way too long if I would include more plays in this video today. But nevertheless, I'd love to hear your fellas' thoughts down below in the comments. Once again, everyone, thank you very much for tuning into today's video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want on to enjoy. And until next time, I will talk to you later. See you later, fellas.